be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the living light who transform darkness into light. To the blessings of this glorious Sunday, make us worthy to praise you with all those who saw the radiant light of your resurrection. We worship and we thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living one who by his death gave life to his creation. By his resurrection he saved his church, gave joy to his flock, and brought us back to his Father, and enriched us with the gifts of his Spirit. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. Only begotten Son, you were born of the Father before all ages, and by your creative will you separated light from darkness on this the first day of the week. You fashioned all creation to honor Adam, the image of your majesty. We praise and we thank you and we celebrate proclaiming, Blessed are you, for you appeared in the flesh on earth like us, and you lived among us. Blessed are you, for you were buried and counted among the dead, and you shined your light in the sadness of the tomb. Blessed are you, for you rose to life, giving good hope to all, and you filled the angels with radiance, and they appeared at your tomb like flashes of lightning. Now, O Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make us worthy to rejoice in the glory of your radiant resurrection. Breathe life into our departed and make them worthy to stand at your right hand in your eternal light that you have prepared for those who love you. With them we praise and we thank you for your graces, and we glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever.
Receive the in fragrance of our incense and of our prayers, and may we become a sweet fragrance through our good works and our actions. Hear our petitions and grant rest to our departed in your dwelling place of joy. O Lord, our God, to you be glory forever. Kodishanta loho kodishant Hayalato no kodishant Lomo yurato Shout with joy from the mountain, Sunday is a fee so great. Offer praise to the Lord God, and with angels celebrate. Letter of Saint Paul unto the Philippians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and your children forever. But whatever gains I had, these I have come to consider as a loss because of Christ. And more than that, I even consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them as so much rubbish so that I may gain Christ and to be found in him not having any righteousness of my own based upon the law, but that which comes through faith, faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on, upon faith to know him and to know the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death. If somehow, I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of this or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since 
I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. My brethren, I for my part do not consider myself to have taken possession, but just one thing, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, which is the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. Praise be to God always. of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Matthew, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle Matthew writes, then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and he gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. And the names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, called Kepha, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James, the son of Alphi and Thaddai, Simon the Cananean and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. And Jesus sent out these 12 after instructing them in this manner. Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the truth, peace be with you. Do not enter into territory of the pagans or into a town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So I want to introduce to you an idea that at the time of our Lord, the entire day of the believer of Israel, who was faithful, was filled with blessings from start to finish. In singular, we call it baraka, and in plural, barakot. And the barakot, from the moment they rose in the morning, washing, there were prayers. Dressing, there were prayers. Putting your shoes on, there were prayers. Walking to your job, there were prayers. When you ate, there were prayers. That one you recognize. But these prayers, these barakot, they blessed everything throughout the day to transform it as a service of God. And in fact, the Our Father itself is almost certainly the first part of our Lord's Prayer is coming from one of the barakot. So this aspect of sanctification, this aspect of holiness, I want to take you to the next level. When we talk about the glory of God, and it'll be a bit technical today, so if you don't mind, I'm actually on this occasion going to pull out my scribbles. Someone said once, you never have notes. I said, well, I don't have notes because the more notes I make, the longer the sermon becomes. So if I do it off the cuff, then you're actually always mercifully only given 20 minutes rather than like in the old days for half an hour or 40 minutes. So when we speak about the glory of God, it's, it's throughout the Old Testament, it's, it's in the Psalms. We ask the question in the, in the uh, anaphora of St. John Chrysostom, it talks about our Lord as being the radiance of the Father. This idea of glory. Glory, the very simple idea of glory is the radiance of God's being reflected in creation. So we're gonna go step by step here because this vision of the old law of God's glory, which is reflected off of creation that he gives to exist is a descent and what we call an illumination. Right? It is a transformation effected by the descent of what we call the Shekinah. Shekinah means presence. So God's presence among his creation, his work, what he accomplishes. And the illumination and the transformation is this descent of the presence. In the Old Testament, you saw it as represented in the Exodus, in the pillar of cloud, in the pillar of fire. That's the Shekinah. That is God's presence among his people in Israel. But before we arrive at that point in the Exodus, we have in the Psalms and we have in, even in our liturgy, the holy, holy, holy. It's called the Kadusha or the Kudus in Arabic. And it's what the seraphim do in returning that glory. They respond being the intelligent beings that they are. They respond to the glory of God, illuminating and transforming. They respond to this glory in song to the holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. And what they're doing by that is this reciprocity that I always talk about. I know it sounds tedious. I always talk about friendship and reciprocity, but this is the very foundation of creation. When we grab something and make it our own, it's mine, 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 mine. We're nothing other than those bratty little children on Christmas day, that Christmas is only about stuff. And we live that way in our own lives. And so the seraphim themselves, the very name seraph, means those who burn. They stand before the glory of the majesty at the highest pinnacle of all creation. And they return consciously, intelligently, that holiness to God. So you have the glory which is a radiance of God's being and the response of the intelligent beings in creation back to God of you are holy, you are transcendent. This is the kingdom, right? This is the Malchuto. This is the kingdom that we're always talking about. This reciprocity of love and affection and friendship and of charity before the Holy One who transcends all things in eternity. So when you go through the Barakot in the Old Testament, and even in fact to this day, the faithful Jews still live this way. The blessings are from the beginning of the day until the end of the day. And we have to also say curses too, but that's a different sermon. But these blessings are the response to the divine fire, which is the radiance of the spirit 
that descends and is expressed in a word. You know, throughout the Old Testament, the word wisdom comes up quite often. But the word wisdom in the old law and in the understanding of the Old Testament is a practical thing. It's not an airy, fairy, esoteric, philosophical course. It's how things are actually done in order, ultimately, for the service of God. That's wisdom. So, for example, during the Exodus, the men who were called, and we have their names in the book of Exodus, the men who were called to make the tent, to make the articles in the tent, the Ark of the Covenant, for example. These men's names are given to us in the Exodus, but we're also told God gave them wisdom in order to do this. And so it's not a speculative, it's a practical thing. God gave them the ability to accomplish according to his plan, the building of the tent, the Ark of the Covenant, etc. So the divine fire, this divine radiance, this burning luminosity, this transformation, this illumination descends, this burning light descends in spirit expressed in word. And that's Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is the moment that the people of, of Israel are called out of Egypt. It's not a political action. If you look at the scriptures, Moses is told, you bring the people here to adore me at this mountain. It's a liturgical purpose. It's a pr adoration. I am the God of your fathers. Yes, it will free you from bondage. But that's it's not a principal purpose. The principal purpose is the religious purpose to come to this mountain. And then, of course, you know the rest of the story. The 40 days, the crashing, the light, the, the thunder, the fire on the top of the mountain. And Moses disappears for 40 days into this kind of horror at the top of this mountain. Everyone is not only horrified and shocked by this image of this cloud and lightning and the fire and the light, they're also told anyone who comes to this mountain, at man or beast, will be put to death. And so this is the word descending in the illumination that speaks to Moses. So what does it do at Mount Sinai? It creates, when the people respond, this is the God of your fathers. This is what he says. He gives you the Hashem. You have the revelation earlier in the burning bush of the name. And the name is revealed, I am he who is. This is what you'll tell them. So first is the revelation of name in the burning bush. And then on exactly the same mountain, God speaks. Now we often speak about the Ten Commandments. But that's actually not the term used in the old law. The term in the old law is the Ten Words. That's why you have the term Decalogue that you're certainly familiar with. But Decalogue is just the Greek word. Deca is ten. Logoi is words. Decalogoi literally means the ten words. So actually, that's a much better translation of what was originally called by Israel the ten words. And so this revelation on Mount Sinai, the people of Israel respond. And when the people of Israel respond, it creates them as a people. It's like the seraphim responding above in heavens, in creation. When Israel responds at Mount Sinai, that is the creation. I will be your God and you will be my people. This is what you see continually in our anaphoras about we are your people and your inheritance. It is the response to the word of God that creates the people. And so hopefully I haven't lost you at this point. But the barakot then become the individual lives within the people of Israel by the conscious homage that we return to God. We make the praise of the seraphim of all of creation to be ours. This is why in the divine liturgy of every single church, east, west, north, south, there is always the kudus. There's always holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. They're not just repeating the vision of chapter 6 of the prophet Isaiah, but it is the response of the people of God in this place at this moment being formed as people by receiving this word, being illuminated and transforming it back to God and making it their own within the covenant. So this is the vision already in the old law. But of course, the word comes into this world and the word was made flesh. 
not in a pillar of smoke, not in fire, but in the Word, in God Himself who enters among us, and the Word was made flesh, and He dwelt among us. Now, if you've gone step by step in this, now you understand the beginning of chapter 10 of St. Matthew. The calling of the apostles is only understood when you see what actually has been the plan of salvation. So chapter 5, 6, and 7 in the Gospel of St. Matthew is famously the Sermon on the Mount that begins with the Beatitude. Right? But our Lord, we're told, St. Matthew drags it out. Our Lord has the people coming, they're coming to learn, and it says he goes up the mountain and sitting, he opens his mouth, teaching them and saying. Three times you say something different of just opening your mouth. He opens his mouth, he teaches them, saying. Because Matthew wants you, remember this is the Jewish gospel. This is the one that is filled with the prophecies of the Old Testament. Saint Matthew wants us to understand that the Sermon on the Mount is the promulgation of the new law from another mountain by the Word Himself, not in imagery of crashing thunder and lightning, but of the reality of the Word Himself speaking illumination to His people and opening His mouth, He taught them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit. And so this is an important thing because this is chapters five, six, and seven. Today's gospel is chapter 10. Chapter eight and nine are just about a bunch of healings. Wow, that sounds a little banal. What's being recorded is a series of different healings, including the healing of Peter's mother-in-law in Capernaum. And in the middle of these healings, St. Matthew talks about his conversion his calling from being a publican. And he puts it in the middle in chapters eight and nine into, <clears throat> excuse me, into these healings. Then we come to today's gospel. It's not just a list of names. And so I know that what you wanted to see then is with the calling of the apostles is the establishment <clears throat> following the Sermon on the Mount is the establishment of the 12 new patriarchs of the new Israel. That's why they're always referred to as the 12. They are the new establishment, the 12 pillars of Israel in her fulfillment because it's not in imagery of mountain. It's not in imagery of fire. It's not in a communication of angels, but a communication and a reality of God himself. And so from the Mount, the Sermon on the Mount, which most people just see as being poetry, blessed are the poor, blessed are the pure of heart, they are profoundly transformative when you actually know them and see what they're saying. It would have shocked and shattered everybody throughout the Sermon on the Mount. The Jews standing there listening to our Lord would have first been scandalized, then shocked, and then for those who became believers, intrigued, and those who rejected it became his enemies. And in the midst of all of this healing that takes place, he calls the 12. And whenever you have the listing of the 12, Peter is always the very first name in the gospel, always. And the very last name, Judas. These are two obvious reasons. And inside the variety of the other 10 men, their names will, be, will change around a little bit. This great importance of what's happening with the apostles, because we're in the midst of the fast of the apostles, the church has chosen for us to read this text. And we celebrate this week the Feast of Saints Peter Paul and the 12 apostles on Friday, Thursday and Friday. So the great importance is to understand what the apostles do when they first go out, and this is why I began this sermon, with our Lord saying, do not go among the pagans and do not go into the towns of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because what God is doing is gathering the people of Israel around him, not the Samaritans, not the pagans. Israel is the first step. Israel has to be taken, perfected, 
responding in its barakot to the response of God himself now who speaks to them to perfect them and to elevate them. Israel's mission, the only reason why Israel exists is to respond to that word that is transformative and illuminating and to receive the word, to receive the Messiah himself. This is why our Lord says, do not go among the pagans and do not go among the Samaritans. And when we have the episodes in the gospel, our Lord does meet a pagan here and there. But there are often times like when he was in the Decapolis, in a place with just a pagan region. And the persons that he meets there is a possessed man living in the cemetery. It's the importance to understand that the original plan of God is that Israel was meant to be gathered around the fulfillment of the word in person, elevated, and Israel was to be transformed to be that priestly people to announce the redemption to all the nations of the earth. But you know the story. You know it didn't go that way. And while there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Jews who did receive the Messiah in that first generation. Israel as a people did not. And that is why after the resurrection, St. Matthew's Gospel finishes by our Lord. We saw this a few weeks ago. And our Lord says to the apostles, you go and you make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But this is after the resurrection. This is after, it's the same evangelist, the same writer, St. Matthew, who's writing about the Sermon on the Mount in its longest form, who has the calling of the apostles here in chapter 10 that we read today. And then in chapter 28, the very gospel itself finishes by saying, now go and make disciples of all the nations. Israel has spun out, Israel has rejected the Messiah for the time being. St. Paul will cover this in his letter to the Romans, 9, 10, and 11, on what is Israel continuing to this day in opposition to the Lord Jesus. But what is their project and their vocation between now and the end of the world? St. Paul actually talks about. You know, the only quarrel we have between Israel and ourselves is Jesus. That's it. That is the only thing, whether this man is the Messiah or not. I told this story this week um, that when I was working in New York, there was a young woman from one of the parishes I worked from out west. And she had, gotten a, she had received a job and she was hired to come to New York to work as a nanny. And it was a Hasidic family, Jewish family. I mean, but a very pious, the, Has, the Hasidim, the Hasidim, they are very pious. They are, Barakot is just the way they live. And a great amount of joy in their lives too. It's the ones you see with the curls and the fringes hanging out under their shirts. These are the Hasidim, usually. And so she had a job to go there. And of course she was requested to always have her head covered which as a Catholic, a faithful Catholic, she had no problem with. So she did that and she began nannying. And she was completely intrigued as this Catholic, she was in her early 20s, completely intrigued by this family because they were like Catholic in all of their attitudes except about Jesus. And they loved her because she was a faithful Catholic. So they saw her as being upright and with integrity and working with the children, they were thrilled. But she was one of these young women that would keep a journal, and so she would write in it. And what came across is the journal became discovered by the mother of the family at one time in the house. And this young woman had been writing about her admiration for this family, the beauty of the parents, the beauty of the children, etc. And the how it was tragic that they hadn't come to fulfillment to understand the fullness of the covenant and that she was praying and making sacrifices for their conversion to receive the Lord Jesus as Messiah. Well, mom found that, she was not pleased, and that was the end of the job. It wasn't hostile, it was just, well, we have two opposite things going on here. And so she was, rel she was relieved of her occupation. 
I just give it as an example because the only thing, when you understand what present day rabbinical Judaism is, the only thing that really, the only thing that we disagree on, sacrifice, priesthood, temple, Old Testament, Abraham, everything is there. And you as Catholics, when you live the barakot, you make your morning offering, you do your prayers throughout the day, you say the daily angelus, you pray morning, noon, and night, you say your daily rosaries, you bless the things that God gives you and you render gratitude. As Christians, we don't have any series of curses. Though those did exist in the Middle, in, in the middle Ages, you do have series of them, but that is an old rabbinical tradition that we dropped, I would say fortunately, over time. When you live in that understanding, what you're doing is repeating. In the divine liturgy, the holy, holy, holy is what we do as a people. But as you pray morning and noon and night and throughout the day, our versions of barakot, of the blessings, you transform the angelic life of the seraphim who respond to God in charity and love and reciprocity. You make that intelligent response of creation your own personally. And when you educate your children to live the barakot, these blessings, when you teach them to live the prayers throughout the days, you transfer that glory and transformation of light to them. So when the 12 apostles are chosen and sent out, they are meant to gather in the lost sheep of Israel, to perfect them and to raise them up to a very specific vocation. That's the meaning of the apostles. That is why we fast for, at this point, a week before the celebration of their holy days, because they are the foundation of the new Israel, of which you are part, of which you make part as members of the Israel of God, St. Paul says, as a contrast to the Israel of the flesh. And this vocation that you have is to communicate not only the holiness of God in your own lives, but to share it with others, not only of salvation, but also of joy. This is why everything has been created. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now receive these offerings which your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the blessed mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the chosen one, our holy father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Elizabeth and Zachariah. Be mindful, O God, of the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Be mindful also of all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. Peter, Chief of the Apostles, on page 774. 774. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Father, God of peace and Lord of security, make us worthy to embrace one another with a sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. O oh Lord, we bow before you to receive your blessings and assistance, for we are weak, and you are the support and refuge of all. We raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O oh Lord, may the light of your face shine upon us, deliver us from every evil, and blot out all our transgressions, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We love to Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just to glorify and exalt you, O Maker of all creation. With the angels we glorify you, and with voices of praise we cry out and we proclaim. Oh, no, Danny, 
Tao De me rendre l'indi antique de Tao Dach lo fai kun wach lov sa giem Maintain shadow, maintain he hev Pusun Chome wa chome da da fai lam alami He then commanded and instructed them, saying, Each time you celebrate these holy mysteries, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. that saved us and as we await your second coming we offer you praise and ask you on the day when you will judge the righteous and sinners do not condemn us because of our sins but have compassion and mercy upon us turn your holy face away from our sins and assist us for this your church implores you and through you and with you implores your father saying O Lord as we your sinful children receive your graces we thank you for them and because of them sessions and our prayers and grant security to your people and peace to your flock protect our shepherds Francis the Pope of Rome Bishara Peter our patriarch of Antioch and Gregory John our bishop assist the priests the deacons and all those who serve your holy church so that they may intercede and pray to you on our behalf we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, mercy. Remember, O Lord, those who have asked us to pray for them, those who desired but were unable to make an offering, and those who assist your holy church. Be a shelter and a refuge for them, for you are the Savior of all. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders in our country and throughout the world. Enlighten their consciences to bring security and peace to your people. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, 
and confessors, St. Joseph, St. Jude, and St. Elizabeth and Zachariah, and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy of their reward. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the righteous fathers and teachers who have gone to their rest among the saints. Remember those who diligently carried your gospel throughout the world and confirmed your holy church in the true faith. Assist us through their prayers and strengthen us in your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Favor, remember, O Lord, our parents, brothers and sisters, teachers, and all the faithful departed here and everywhere throughout who have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses. Through our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb through your mercy. May our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O God the Father, you strengthen and you encourage us, because for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and to receive our offering, so that in one spirit we may call upon you praying, Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory of thy name. O Lord, lead us not into the trials of temptation that we do not have the strength to overcome, but deliver us from every evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, bless your worshipers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive all their sins, for you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. 
holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for He is one in heaven and on earth, to Him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins, and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever. giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink, O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, O oh God, for this gift, O oh Father, for this gift that you have given us, though we are unworthy. Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo Elukurchunna. Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your holy cross and be their shelter and refuge. And perfect them with your abundant blessings that we may raise glory to thanks to you, to your blessed Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen.